<laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, oh, Lord. Every time I turn around, I, I look and see uh, the serpent, you know, just slithering through every aspect of our lives. And all this wonderful dentistry that we've been so happy about, myself included, by the way, uh, caps and crowns and all those things, uh, t- turns out not to be so, so great. But whatever, that's an at-home test. Another at-home test uh, people can do in the privacy of their own home is if you can find a black light, look at your pupils. Human pupils should not be uh, luminescent. They should not. They should not fluoresce. Uh, and thirdly, um, you can get a digital thermometer and take your temperature, remembering that uh, <clears throat> you, the average human being should be about around 98.6. That's an average normal temperature, and with a little variance here and there. And we're seeing people with 94, 95, 96, and so our temperature has dropped dramatically. I had a client who went and had some diagnostic done, and of course they took blood pressure and they took temperature, and, and it came back as 96.2 or something, and she said to the nurse, ooh, isn't that low? And she, the nurse said, no, no, that's pretty common now. I see that all the time. I've been charting my temperature for about a month, and the only time I hit 98 at all is after a hot bath. I'll wake yeah. up at 94, 95. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. not normal. So these are just some simple <clears throat> at-home tests that people can take to determine. And those are, those are all um, wonderful ways to begin to recognize this in the body, you mentioned that you got a calendar as a gift that was a photograph, a very, very old photograph of yeah, Indian this, faces. Yeah, this and still disturbs me. Can, yeah, can you tell, tell us what was disturbing about those photographs? Well, I guess I have to preface it with when you, when you have a passion and when you're working with something as closely as I am with this Morgellon syndrome, you start to look at people, and I, 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 I can look at people and see involvement, how much, and, and, and markers, what I call markers, on people's faces. It's very hard to describe, and you have to be pretty attuned to it. Uh, some cases, not so attuned, but some cases, it's subtle. But you begin to, I always tell people, do you know somebody thin, really thin, who's got a nice good pouch under their chin, you know, a nice sort of a rooster pouch? And you'll see it all the time. And that's these guys just doing very well, let's say, in that gum, tooth, you know, head area. And then they, 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 they will pouch out under your chin. And so you can be very fit and very thin and still have this pouch. And so that's one of the markers. But I can see lines that are markers and this and that. And um, obviously, I live on an Indian Pueblo. I have a great respect. Uh, they don't like to be called Native American, by the way. First Nation, maybe. Um, but Indians. I have a great respect and deep love of these peoples. And so, uh, I think it was Christmas, I don't know, birthday. A friend gave me a calendar with all of these old, early 1900, late 1800 photographs of Native American people. And I'm looking, and I'm going, holy cow. They've got these markers. How could that be? I, I'm really on a... Um, I mean, the chemtrails are, are, are there, and they're real, and and they are... You know, they're the greatest delivery system of all times. But I'm really starting to look at how long ago were some of, not all, but were some of these materials being introduced into the human population. Now, we, you know, we hear about the smallpox blankets that were given to the Indian peoples, and we know that. But I, I, so I, the more, and then I start studying people like Beauchamp back in the 1800s is looking at these pleomorphic beings that very closely resemble these pseudo-life forms. So I, I, it gets more and more curious. And with that, I want to say, because there's a lot of, snake oil sales people coming out of the woodwork seeing an opportunity for uh, financial gain. Anybody who claims they can cure anything on this, 
um, please let that be a flag for you because as far as I know, some of the greatest minds I work with, Nobel Prize nominees and da-da-da-da, people with um, permanent exhibits in the Smithsonian Institute say there is no such thing. I, I agree. I think you can mitigate. I think you can uh, control and beat back and, and, and do a lot of things, but this business of curing, and then if they're asking you for a lot of money, that should be another flag because they're not really coming yeah. from their heart. They're not coming from their heart. Everybody has to eat and everybody has to pay rent. Yes, we agree. But um, there are a lot of people profiteering on this, and there'll be more and more as more and more people begin to demonstrate uh, these these um, symptoms. So that, I just want to say that because there's a there's a lot of that going on now, and it bothers me. Well, Dr. Scott, now that we're at, at that point, uh, we've got we've had a couple of questions from Chad. I'll just can we get them out of the way? Someone asked why Himalayan salt, if you could just address that pre briefly. Sure. Um, I'm sure there's another one somewhere, but right now, for me, it's, it, 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 I have a, uh, Rose, I have a, a strong thing that whatever I introduce to people should be available to everyone, affordable, there's the key, to everyone, and it should work. There are some very expensive natural salts out there. You know, for a little tiny jar, thirty dollars of you know the gray, this that da 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 da. But we want a salt that's been unadulterated, that hasn't been stripped of its complementary minerals. That's a real salt in full complementary form with all of the minerals that should be there. And the one that's most affordable right now is Himalayan crystal pink salt. It and it's also been protected. It can, it's coming from um, a deep earth in the Himalayas. It, it, it hasn't been out in the open. Sea salt Gosh. is suspect. Yeah, sea salt is suspect now, not only because much of it has been stripped. I mean, if it's pure white, it's been stripped. But as I said, you can buy, like, Irish gray salt, a little tiny jar for whatever, uh, but that's not practical for, for many people. So... I recommend the Himalayan, and the uh, crystal pink salt is something that we ingest, we eat on our food, but also they have something called a Himalayan crystal salt inhaler. Now, there's some wannabes out there that are plastic, and it's not really the real deal. So you want to make sure it's ceramic, and it's a wonderful lung tonic. Very important right now, lung health. The wonderful. World Health Organization, which is an oxymoron at best, I call them oxy, Agreed. Oxymoronic <laughs> has, has quietly announced that the number one killer of humans worldwide is lung cancer, surpassed heart disease. Uh, and lung cancer. Now we should so be surprised. So it's now number one. Yeah, we shouldn't be surprised. And what is even more interesting, and I can touch on this later if you want, seventy percent of the new lung cancer people victims, really, um, never smoked. Never smoked. No, and, um, and, and I guess, you know, here we go again with the passive smoking regime that they, that they put out, uh, you know, through our media. Of course, people can get lung, lung cancer from passive smoking now. But um, right. I second, understand that... Yeah, you, secondhand well, smoke. Now, does that make any sense? Yeah. The, these stats would imply that smoking is actually a therapy... But now, we're not talking commercial, chemicalized, poisoned cigarettes. They, they went after that. That's the first thing. That should have been a light. When we start to think about what their real agenda is, that we now know, is not for our good. Why were they so intense about going after tobacco and poisoning it and telling everybody it's killing you and well, that would imply there's something important about it, and to to the Indians, they will tell you it's very sacred. And we can get into lung health therapies in a little bit, but we have to begin to separate what we've been told over and over and over till we take it as truth, and, and then we have to look with critical minds and say, the same guys that are delivering all of these toxic chemicals to us through our lungs, through the air supply, are they really concerned about your lung health? 
I mean, do you really think they are? Well, honestly, this this is crazy stuff, isn't it? I mean, the station managers just said to me in Skype, the uh, Nighthawk has just said a local company discovered a derivative that cures lung cancer, but the FDA is holding it up, holding up the testing, and the deriv derivative chemical comes from tobacco. So you know, uh, ah. this, this is interesting information here. Well, yeah. see, tobacco is sacred and unmolested, and you'd be very hard put to find any anymore that is. So I have people smoking things other than tobacco, spearmint, mullen, comfrey, colt's foot, herba santa, sage, okay? These are herbs that we smoke um, because it's very hard to find. Now, in the United States, the Mohawk Indian people and the Seneca people are putting out um, conventionally looking cigarettes that they don't add any uh, any of that poison to. Because in, in conventional cigarettes, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of chemicals. They try to take something sacred, which is what they always do, and make it poisonous. And they've done a pretty good job. Um, but it isn't just tobacco. There are other things we can smoke for our lung health. And we, we can talk about that if you want to uh, at another point. But I want to get back to the Morgellon slash chemtrail thing because we never did go into what are the elements and what can we do about it. And I'd really like Certainly. to be able to do that for people. Thank you. Well, we were, we were, you know, I mean, we've got, we're, fa we're facing things such as barium, aluminium, strontium. I mean, we've got, we've had arsenic, titanium. It's just no end. And of course, these uh, blood cells. Uh, no end to, to what people are, f are finding in this. So, I mean, barium, barium is, is one of the biggest problems that we're having, obviously. I've got a daughter that has, her, her poor wee lungs are just taking a hiding, you know. Um, so, if, if we could go into barium first, it would Absolutely. be very great. Barium is one of the baddest puppies that there is. First of all, barium is carcinogenic, period. Barium displaces potassium in your body, potassium being a critical mineral for all body function. Barium punches holes in the myelin sheath, hence MS, that kind of thing, Parkinson's. You know, we have people, uh, and it's really interesting. Uh, Clifford brought this to me. Uh, he said, do they not talk to each other? At the National Institutes of Health, <laughs> we won't go there, in this country, they put up on their website, and I don't know if it's still there, a paper called Barium Intoxication. And they went on to say that they had linked barium with MS, that it punched holes in the myelin sheath, blah, blah, blah. Then they went on to say that the military was spraying barium in the air supply to enhance radar. And that is the only official arm of the U.S. government I have ever seen admit that they were spraying barium into our air supply. Barium is also a cough suppressant. With all this junk coming in, we should be coughing our heads off, but we're not. You don't hear people coughing at all anymore. They learned right. that when they, they sent the, the Navajo, and many of the Indian people, of course, into the barium mines to mine barium. In the first week or two, they were coughing their heads off, and all of a sudden they stopped. So it's a cough so suppressant. So what can we do and what can we give to our children to help rid our bodies of this barium? Is there anything? Yes, there is. This is the good news. Now we're into the good news part. All right. Oh, finally, huh? Finally. Let's go to the good news. Okay. The good news is that everything that we needed to in these times is, was here. It's here for us. It's just we need and we have lots of light spirits running around, finding it, grabbing it, and sharing it. So that's what we're doing here. Now, 